So, <coughs> we are now in the concluding part of the chapter. Uh, we saw certain things happening. A uh, little bit recap of the things. So, now going to America for higher studies, meeting Hana on return, marrying her. Then arrival of the prisoner of war, whose condition was very bad, decided to operate, operation was successful. Servants did not approve of this action of their masters. And then they left the house. And then the arrival of the man in uniform, who informed Sadao that he was summoned to palace as general was in trouble. Sadao goes to see the general. Now here it seems that <coughs> Sadao had informed everything about the American. And that's why the general says, I understand fully, but that is because I once took a degree in Princeton, so few Japanese have. I, now what he actually wants to say, he says that, yes, yes, it was obvious that Sadao had lived for a long time in America, and so there must have been some affinity developed. But Sadao objected. He said, I cared nothing for the man. But having operated on him with such success, he had, he had done the operation so successfully, so he himself cannot do anything to harm that man. Listening this, General says, yes, it only makes me feel you more indispensable. I cannot do without you. Evidently, you can save anyone. You are so skilled. You say you think I can stand one more such attacks as I have had today. Not more than one. Then certainly I can allow nothing to happen to you. Here we see General a little bit self-centered. He, he says that he cannot allow anything to happen to Sadao because Sadao just informed him that he can survive not more than one attack. You cannot be arrested. Suppose you were condemned to death and the next day I had to have my operation. Who will do my operation? So thou said, there are other surgeons, excellency. But general says, none I trust. The best ones have been trained by Germans and would consider the operation successful even if I die. I do not care for their point of view. Then, trying to ask, Sadao to do something that it seems a pity that we cannot better combine the German ruthlessness with the American sentimentality. Then you could turn your prisoner over to execution and yet I could be sure you would not murder me while I was unconscious. The general laughed. He had an unusual sense of humor. As a Japanese, could you not combine these two foreign elements, he asked. Sadao smiled. I am not quite sure, but for your sake I would be willing to try excellency. The general shook his head. I had rather not be the test case. Now, general also seems to be a little irritated. That why that man had to come near Sadao's house. It is very unfortunate that this man should have washed up on your doorstep. Sadao also affirmed it. Then general suggested him something. That it could be best if he could be killed quietly. Uh, not by you, but by someone who does not know him. Then General informed him that he has his own private assassin. Now assassins are those people who m kill people on the orders of someone. Then he said that if he could, he would send uh, two of his assassins uh, that night or any night. And uh, it is warm those days and it was natural to keep the door open. They would go and uh, kill him. Sadao agreed to it. General further informed that the assassins were very capable assassins. They are expert in doing the things. They know the trick of inward bleeding. And if Sadao would suggest, they would also help in removing the body. Sadao liked this idea. This, th that perhaps would be best excellency. He agreed, thinking of her. <coughs> He left uh, General's presence then and went home, thinking over the plan. In this way, the whole thing would be taken out of his hands. And he decided that he would not tell Hana anything about the assassin, because she was a timid woman, and she would be really afraid, scared to know about the things. And when everything would be over, then he would inform her about the things, if necessary. While going back to home, he had only one thought in his mind, 
that he felt that he would not allow any other thing to come into his mind. He would just work upon the logic, nothing else. But as he opened the door, when he went home, as he opened the door where the patient was, he was surprised to see that the young man was out of bed and preparing to go into the garden. He said that whose permission he has taken, the young man, the young American said that he was not used to take permission. And then suddenly he told Sadao whether the part at his back where he had operated, the muscle would remain stiff as they are now. Now when the American informed this, Sadao forgot everything. The plan with the general, the assassins, his own promise to himself that he would not let anything come into his mind because it was a challenge to his skill. Challenge to his skill as a surgeon, as a doctor. He just lifted the shirt and inspected that part. He said that he had made provisions for that, but then he said that if nothing, if exercise cannot relax the muscles over there, maybe the massage would do. But the American was not so much worried about that. He informed doctor that if he hadn't met a Japanese like him, most probably would not have been alive. He also said that if all the Japanese were like him, there would not have been any war. And after that, Sadao left the room. That night, Sadao slept very badly. Time and again, there was only one thing. Any noise, any sound that came, he felt that the assassins had come. Next morning, he woke up early and with an excuse, went into the room of the American and there he saw that his patient was sleeping peacefully. But next day it was little bit what you can say. The high wind. He listened to the sounds of bending buffs and whistling partisans. Buff, this uh, uh, branches of tree and all that. Hana even uh, suggested that she could, uh, they would, they should close the partition, but Sadao said no. Let it be done by him. He is strong enough to do that. That night also he waited impatiently. Nothing happened. Then the third night, of course, must be the night. The wind changed to quite rain and the garden was full of the sound of dripping eaves and running springs and Sadao was quite confident that taking advantage of such weather the assassins would come. He was a little relaxed. In the middle of the night there was a sound of crash and he leaped to his feet. What was that? Hana cried. The baby woke at her voice and began to wail. I must go and see. But he held her hand and would not let her move. Sadao, she cried, what is the matter with you? Don't go, he muttered, don't go. His terror infected her and she stood breathless, waiting. There was only silence. Together they crept back into the bed, the baby between them. Now we can understand why Sadao did not want Hana to go over there because he felt that the sound was made by the assassins. And he did not want Hana to be in front of them. Yet when he opened the door of the guest room in the morning, there was the young man. He was very happy and had already washed. He had already shaved and all that and there was a faint color in his cheeks. I'm well, he said joyously. Sadao drew his kimono around his, kimono around his weary body. He could not, he decided, certainly to go through another night like that. Now all these three nights waiting impatiently for the assassins to come had taken toll over Sadao. This was too much for him and he felt that this young American, this American was not worth taking so much of pain so he finally decided and he came to his conclusion. He told the American, you are well, you are so well that I think if I put my boat on the shore tonight with food and extra clothing in it, you might be able to row to that little island not far from the coast. It is so near the coast that it has not been worth fortifying. Fortifying means taking arrangement, making arrangements to uh, save it or protect it or to 
put some uh, security over it. Nobody lives on it because in storm it is submerged. But this is not the season of storm. You could live there until you saw Aquarian fishing boat pass by. They pass quite near the island because the water is many fathoms deep there. The young man stared at him, slowly comprehending, trying to understand what Sada was trying to tell. Do I have to? He asked. Is it necessary? Sada said, yes, it is necessary because it is not now a hidden fact that he was there. And it was true. It was true. The servants. They were in the house, they had left, and they were quite aware of the presence of the American. And he just pointed to that fact. The young man agreed to it. Sadao did not see him till evening. As soon as it was dark, he had dragged a stout boat, strong boat, down the shore, and in it he put food and bottled water that he had bought secretly during the day, as well as two quills he had bought at a pawn shop. The boat he tied to a post in the water for the tide was high. There was no moon and he worked without a flashlight. When he came to the house he entered as though he were just back from his work and so Hana knew nothing. Yumi was here, she said as she served his supper. Though she was so modern, still she did not eat with him. Yumi cried over the baby. She went on with a sigh. She misses him so. The servants will come back as soon as the foreigner is gone, Sadao said. Now he went into the guest room that night before. He went to bed himself, check carefully the American's temperature, the state of the wound and his heart and pulse. The pulse was irregular, but that was perhaps because of excitement. The young man's lips were pressed together and his eyes burned. Only the scars on his neck were red. I, the... American said that he, he, he could understand that Sadao was once again trying to save his life. Sadao said, not at all, not at all. He was doing it because it was not at all convenient for him to have him in his house any longer. He thought of giving the man a flashlight and finally he gave it to him. It was a small one, his own, which he used at night when he was caught. Now he gave certain instructions to the American. If your food runs out before you catch a boat, signal me two flashes at the same instant the sun drops over the horizon. Do not signal in darkness, for it will be seen. If you are all right but still there, signal me one. You will find fresh fish easy to catch, but you must eat them raw. A fire would be seen. The young man listened to every instruction. He was dressed now in Japanese clothes which Sadao had given him and at the last moment Sadao wrapped a black cloth about his blonde head. Now, Sadao said, the American without a word shook Sadao's hand warmly and then walked quite well across the floor down the step into the darkness of the garden. Once, twice, Sadao saw his light flash to find his way, but that would not be suspected. He waited until from the shore there was one more flash and then he closed the partition. That night he slept. After a long time, Sadao slept peacefully. Now meanwhile what happened was that the general had a severe attack and uh, he had to be operated urgently. And when he regained his consciousness, he asked, you say the man escaped. Now. Sadao, for when he operated him, initially he felt that general would not survive because the gallbladder was much involved. Then gradually the old man began to breathe deeply and demanded food. Sadao had not been able to ask about the assassin. So far as he knew, they had never come. Meanwhile, the household had returned back to a former self. The servants had returned and Yumi had cleaned the guest room thoroughly and had burned sulfur in it to get the white man's smell out of it. Nobody said anything. Only the gardener was little angry because he had got behind with his chrysanthemums. It's a type of flower. But after a week, Sadao felt the general was well enough to be spoken to about the prisoner. Yes, Excellency, he escaped, Sadao now said. He coughed. 
signifying that he had not sell, said all he might have said, but was unwilling to disturb the general further. But the old man opened his eyes suddenly. So the, so the doctor informed general. And uh, we see that when Shadao saw that, the general was now in a condition to listen to him and understand the things. He informed him about the escape of the prisoner. The general said, that prisoner, did I not promise you I will kill him for you? You did, Excellency, Sadao said. Well, well, the old man said in a tone of amazement, surprise, so I did. But you see, I was suffering a good deal. The truth is, I thought of nothing but myself in sort. I forgot my promise to you. He was trying to convince Sadao that it was his condition which made him forget the things, which made him uh, forget uh, that he had made any promise. Sada also said that maybe, maybe that was the reason, that was the reason he forgot. General is trying to clarify his position over here. He says it was certainly very careless of me. But you understand, it was not lack of patriotism or dereliction of duty. As if he was trying to convince Sadao, there was, uh, if he forgot something, it was not carelessness or lack of patriotism. It was his condition, his medical problem, his health problem, which actually made him preoccupied with his own condition and he forgot the things. He looked anxiously at his doctor. If the matter should come out, you would understand that, wouldn't you? He wanted an assurance from Dr. Sada that somehow if matters disclosed and the things were investigated, Sada would be there at his side supporting him. Certainly, Your Excellency, Sada said. He suddenly comprehended that the general was in the palm of his hand and that as a consequence he himself was perfectly safe. Sadao could understand immediately that general was now in the palm of his hand, in his control, and general would never go against him. And so he was himself safe. I can swear to your loyalty, Excellency, he said to the old general, and to your zeal, enthusiasm against the enemy. You are a good man, the general murmured and closed his eyes. You will be rewarded. But Sadao, searching the spot of black in the twilighted sea that night, had his reward. There was no prick of light in the dusk. No one was on the island. His prisoner was gone, safe, doubtless, for he had warned him to wait only for a Korean fishing boat. Now while standing on the veranda, gazing out to the sea, from whence the young man had come that other night, without any reason, started flashing before his eyes those various white faces, the Americans whom he had known and had been associated with. The professor at whose house he had met Hana, a dull man and his wife had been a silly talkative woman, in spite of a wish to be kind. He remembered his old teacher of anatomy who had been so insistent on mercy with the knife. Then he remembered the face of his fat and slatternly landlady. He had had great difficulty in finding a place to live in America because he was a Japanese. The Americans were full of prejudice and was bitter to live in it, knowing himself their superior how he had despised the ignorant and dirty old woman who had at last consented to house him in her miserable home. He had once tried to be grateful to her because she had, in his last year, nursed him through influenza, but it was difficult. And then finally, he remembered a youthful haggard face of his prisoner, white and repulsive. And then finally, a question came to his mind. Strange, he thought, I wonder 
why I could not kill him. Now, standing there in the veranda, he remembered every one, every American that he had been associated with. His professor, the professor whose house, at whose house he met Hana, the anatomy professor, his landlady, and finally, the white haggard face of this prisoner, the prisoner of war, whom he had given shelter and had treated him and helped him escape. And this, at this point of time, there comes a question to his mind. I wonder why I could not kill him. Though Sadao does not have any answer to this, but we know exactly what was the reason behind it. And now come, we come to the main central idea of the story that is humanism versus nationalism. It is the victory of humanism over nationalism. Now what is nationalism? Nationalism is restricted with boundaries, whereas humanism transcends all the boundaries. Sadao, as a human being, as a doctor, saved the American. Yeah, at times when he was away from the American, he thought like a Japanese. He thought like a Japanese. Nationalistic feeling over there. But eventually, what happened? It was the human, the human uh, approach, the humanism feeling for one human being of another human being, the duty of a doctor, the duty of a human being towards another human being, that finally prevailed. And that was the reason why he could not kill that American. And that's all.